Hi, you're with Chandeep at Goodly once again. And in this video, we're going to talk about the top n function in DAX. Now, the top n function actually accepts a table and returns a table. So what you would put inside of the top n function is a table. And what you get outside of the top n function is also a table. Let's just take a look at the syntax here. The first two parts of the top n function are the n value and the table. And those are the only two mandatory parts. The other parts are optional parts. Let's just take a look at those two first. So here, top n is asking you for a table. You can write any table here. Maybe let's say you write the sales table. In the n value, you write three. So your top n input becomes top n three and then sales and you close the bracket. Now what this is going to do is this is going to take the full sales table and extract the top three rows of it and give you again a full table with three rows of the sales table. And those rows will be the actual first three rows of the sales table. Now people actually wanted sometimes to actually get the first three rows of the sales table. This could be a need at times, but most times people would want to have the top rows in the order of maybe total sales, the total transactions, total refunds and things like that. So they would want to extract the total rows by the order of an expression and that is what is the third part of the top end function so you can write let's say three rows of the sales table by total sales so you can just write the total sales measure here and that measure can be evaluated in ascending or descending order so you can write the order here as well so what this does is this goes in every single row of this table does this expression in the ascending or the descending order whatever you have mentioned and if it qualifies as the end value it just keeps that row otherwise it discards that row and you input the full table and you get the filter table with n number of rows. Now in the top end function, you can tend to write the actual physical table that you have in the data model could be a sales table, calendar table, products table, or you can tend to write a table that you have created using an expression. Why don't we just spend more time on Power BI and let's just take a look at how top end works. All right, I'm in Power BI and I have two very simple tables here. We have a sales table and the calendar table. Calendar is my date table and I've linked these two tables with the date column. Let's just quickly take a look at the columns here. So we have a unique transaction ID. We have the sales amount. We have the product that was sold product ID and the date on which it was sold. And we have a simple sum measure, which is total sales, which is nothing but the sum of the sales value. Now, like I said that the top end function actually creates a table so we have the option of creating a table in the modeling tab. So let's just create a new table and let's just call this as top table. Now I'm going to write equals to top end and the first part is n value. So let's just say I write maybe one that I just want one row of let's say the sales table and if I close the bracket right now it's actually going to go in the sales table and get me the first row of the data so if I just click on the top end function right here you can see that I actually have the first row of the sales table now, if I wanted it it's okay but if I don't want it I might be wanting to have the top first row of the sales table in the order of total sales so I will put the third input here and I will say hey why don't you find it in the order of total sales which is the measure that I have already created if I press enter right now I will find find that the top end function is giving me actually four rows, not just one row, because there are four products clashing for the first position. That's why it gives you all the rows of the sales table. I can even write a calendar table here. So I can just write calendar here, press enter. Now what I will get is top one row of the calendar in total sales. That means what I'm getting right now is that 5th of May in the year of 2012 was the best selling day across all sales table. That's what we get. We can also choose to write a table expression here. So right now we are actually writing the sales table on the calendar table. Both these table exist in the data model. I can also choose to create a virtual table here on the fly. So I'm just going to write sales table and product ID and what I now get is the best selling product of the sales table so I've written the values function here which is just finding unique product IDs from the sales table and whatever unique product IDs do I have from that I find the total sales so it's just showing me the best selling product as a single row table. If there would have been a clash, I would have gotten two rows, but just a single column. The idea was to show you that in the top end function, you can choose to write a actual physical table that you have in the data model, or you can choose to write the table that you create using the DAX expression. All right, let's just take a look at how are we going to use the top end function in a measure. So here in the table, what we have is two simple columns year and the month. This is a table that I've created. And here against the month, I'd like to find out the best selling day. So I'm going to come on the sales table right click here a new measure and I'm going to call this measure as best selling day. 
All right, so what I have done here is that I have written the top end function. In the top end function, just like before, I'm writing three parts. The top end, just one row. The calendar table and total sales is the order of expression. That's the table. Now, top end function gives me a table. It, the output of the top end function is a table. And concatenate x function accepts a table as the first part of the input. So you can see that it's accepting a table. So this will fit right in here well. And then from this table, I want to extract the date in the DDMMM format. I I press enter that's my measure I close the bracket press enter and I drag the formula to my pivot table and that's what I get so in the month of Jan 3rd Jan was the best selling day 22nd Feb was the best selling day so on and so forth just be sure that while using the top end function in a measure make sure that you put the top end function wherever the DAX expression is asking you for a table but if you just write top end function and do not write any aggregator around it it will probably give you an error because you can't really have tables being evaluated as a measure all right measures need to have single values and table obviously doesn't have a single value it has rows and columns of values all right that was about the top end function let me know if you have any questions in the comments i'll be more than happy to help you out thanks so much for watching this i hope you like it you take care of yourselves and bye bye